Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Team Red. Vainqueur, l'équipe rouge, number 30, le numéro 30, Philip Gustafson. Number 33, le numéro 33, Mad Sogard. Number 14, le numéro 14, Max Verano. Number 21, le numéro 21, Logan Brown. Number 29, le numéro 29, Clay Honest. Number 40, le numéro 40, Connor McDonald. Number 42, le numéro 40, Victor Lodin. Number 43, le numéro 43, Johnny Tyconic. Number 47, le numéro 47, Mark Castellick. Number 48, le numéro 48, Jacob Bernard Docker. Number 59, le numéro 59, Alex Formenton. Number 79, le numéro 79, Angus Crookshank. Number 82, le numéro 82, Miles Gendron. Number 84, le numéro 84, Aaron Luchuk. Number 85, le numéro 85, Vitaly Abramov. Number 88, le numéro 88, Holly Alsing. Number 90, le numéro 90, Trenton Bork. Number 94, le numéro 94, Steven Anderson. Number 95, le numéro 95, Chris Clapperton. And number 96, le numéro 96, Cade Townend. And now let's meet Team White. Number 34, le numéro 34, Joey Decord. Number 70, le numéro 70, Kevin Mandelosi. Number 19, le numéro 19, Drake Batherson. Number 26, le numéro 26, Eric Brandstrom. Number 38, le numéro 38, Rudolph Balsers. Number 45, le numéro 45, Parker Kelly. Number 49, le numéro 49, Jordan Power. Number 50, le numéro 50, Max Gannett. Number 52, le numéro 50, Marcus Nermi. Number 54, le numéro 54, Alexis Benner. Number 57, le numéro 57, Shane Pinto. Number 60, le numéro 60, Lassie Thompson. Number 62, le numéro 62, Todd Burgess. Number 63, le numéro 63, Yakov Novak. Number 64, le numéro 64, Jean-Christophe Baudouin. Number 68, le numéro 68, Luke Lohait. Number 76, le numéro 76, Jonathan Aspiro. Number 80, le numéro 80, Nick Welsh. Number 81, le numéro 81, Jonathan Gruden. And number 92, le numéro 92, Mark Simpson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you please rise, remove your hats, and join Sophia Pierce as she performs O Canada. Veuillez lever, retirer chapeau et casquette. Et joignez-vous à Sophia Pierce pour l'interprétation des hymnes de l'hymne national.
All right, welcome back inside the KRC, everybody. I, well, actually, we shouldn't welcome anybody back because nobody left, uh, and for good reason. Sophia Pierce did the national anthem here. What an outstanding job as we get set for uh, Development Camp 2019 Scrimmage presented by Sportcheck. Gord Wilson, Dean Brown with you here yes. at the Canada Rec Center, and both teams are piling into their benches, and we are getting set. White to our right, left to uh, red to our left, and uh, this should be a fun one here. Uh, obviously, Dean, uh, four goaltenders uh, of the, what, seven or eight that the Ottawa Senators have in the organization. Six signed, two drafted, so uh, uh, Philip it's going to be... Uh, Mad Sogard, who we're all anxious to yeah. see, uh, at six foot, you know his exact height. Well, he, well he's, he's <laughs> over six foot seven, yep. but not quite six foot eight, he says. So for to start the game, it's going to be Philip Gustafson for Team Red and Joey Decord for Team White. So in the second half of the game, we'll see Mad Sogard. A uh, Sogard for uh, Team Red and uh, the uh, second goalie for Team One would be Kevin Mandeles in the second half of the game. And of course, the last time we saw Joey Decord was in Buffalo in a 5 2 loss in his NHL debut. All right, this one's underway with the play by play and lots of banter. Here's Dean. Here's Logan Brown coming down the left side into the zone, takes a deep look in the center of the puck, back in front, and a great chance in front of the net, and Formanton just couldn't find that top corner. And Joey Decord, so technically sound, comes out to challenge. Real good push from right to left to make the save. Puck is dumped into the corner. Here's Max Verano to get it. Bernard Docker tips it away from him. Now along the boards, Verano trying to just protect the puck in the corner. Finally comes out. Logan Brown tries to knock it down. Puck along the board still, and Verano still digging for it. Team White comes up with it, but Formanton steals it away. Close quarters to his own net. Gets tangled up, and the puck cleared back along the boards. Team White holds it in. Here's Branstrom through traffic. His long, drifting shot. Gloved down by Gustafson, and we'll have a face-off to the left of the Team Red goal. Yeah, and we'll keep a close eye on in white, number 26, Eric Branstrom. Of course, a first-round pick of the Vegas Golden Knights. Comes over to the Ottawa Senators as part of the Mark Stone deal. And I know all eyes will be on him through rookie camp, and we're expecting to see him in main camp as well. Aspero sent the puck in deep, but now Team Red counters back with it down to the line. Abramov couldn't get the puck at the line and back the other way. Aspero sends it ahead. Here's Kelly to chase it. Kelly down low to the corner as he tries to work his way around his man, but couldn't get along around Ole Olsing. No surprise to see the hard work in the corner. Oh, there's a little centering pass that goes off the heel of the stick of Gustafson. He holds on to make the save. No surprise to see he's wearing uh, number 45 in white. Parker Kelly Dean doing a terrific job uh, in on the four check. Um, he was the uh, Jonathan Petra award winner yeah. last year. Is the most uh, one of the most. He and Brady Kachuk shared the award uh, for the hardest worker uh, in camp last year at Dev Camp. And he had a great year in Prince Albert. Prince Albert, for almost the entire year, was the number one ranked team in junior hockey in Canada. And he was one of the assistant captains. And they had a fantastic season. And individually, so did Parker Kelly along the boards. Victor Lodin loses the puck, but his team ends up back with it again on the point. Here's McDonald to the high slot. Vitaly Abramov. Abramov nailed as he tried to turn the corner. Takes a shoulder check there, a sturdy one from Jonathan Aspero. You may remember him from last year in the rookie tournament when a game against Montreal put the shoulder down on Evans just inside the Montreal blue line and knocked him out with a legal check and he had to be stretchered off the ice. Ended up being okay, but it was a big hit by Aspero. Here's Logan Brown back inside the team white zone. His shot goes off a stick to the corner. Puck along the boards. I mean, that big hit by Aspero was on Vitaly Abramov. He's listed at 5'9", 171 pounds. I will dispute that. Yeah. I, I, I'm about 5'9", and he is shorter than I am. Um, both got rocked. I mean, it was a huge hit by Aspero, but uh, Vitaly Abramov bounced right back up. He can uh, take a hit and uh, is quite solid on his skates. I, personally, I think it's so cute that you think you're 5'9". <laughs> Uh, Team Red, here's a giveaway back in front. Oh, nifty move, a backhand. It just goes high and wide from Aaron Luchuk. Back to the point. Shot through, traffic is knocked down. Chance for Team White to get it up ice in the lead pass to the neutral zone. Simpson headmans the puck, but Team Red turns it back. Here's Verano at the center, down the right side. Sends the puck into the zone. So Luchuk just tips it back to the corner. Here's Formanton in on the forecheck. The Whites get it out. The Reds dump it back in just as quickly. 
After a terrific university career with Princeton, Max Verano, the Ottawa native, uh, we saw play 12 games to finish the season with the Ottawa Senators. Scored twice, picked up assists on two more, four points, and where will he start the season? He's obviously got the taste of the National Hockey League, and this will be a big summer for him. Off the draw, Team Red wins it. The shot through traffic that misses, back down along the boards. Bernard Docker comes in to hold it in. The Bernard is his mother's side. The Docker is his dad's side. Back to the high slot. Tip back to the point. There to hold in. Kastelik holds it in. Gord will get to it in a moment, but he comes from a hockey, hockey, and more hockey family. Buck is down to the line and in. Lassie Thompson sends it in. It's tipped in front. Back along the boards, Team Red trying to get out. They steer the puck ahead, back to the neutral zone. Long lead pass. Crookshank sends it cross ice. At the line, though, spinning with it. Clapperton couldn't get anything happening, and Team White gets back to center. Banks it off the struts in the ceiling, and in. That's why the whistle comes. That was a in the ceiling puck. Well, that's a little bit disappointing as well. Four minutes and two seconds played here at the KRC, and we don't have a score. It's Well, we do have a score. It's 0-0. We don't have a goal yet. We've only had a couple of shots on goal. One good scoring chance in the first 30 seconds. Stopped by Joey DeCord. If you're just joining us and didn't read the thing at the bottom of the screen you're streaming on, this is the Sens Development Camp scrimmage brought to you by Sportcheck. I'm Dean. He's Gord. The crowd is the crowd. Team Red in the corner trying to get a cycle going off the cycle. Back to the front of the net. Losing the puck on the play was Abramoff. There's Team White trying to recover, but in on it quickly. Puck is stolen away in front of the net. Unable to get a shot away, though, is Anderson. And Team White now just trying to get some control in their own zone and get some kind of a breakout. Back to center with it now. Here's Branson to the line. One on three, tries to chip it through to himself. It doesn't work. Logan Brown gives it away. Here's Branstrom, high slot. Turns, fires, and a pad save as Gustafson gets the left pad on it. Sweetest shot, sweetest save. And a good one by the left toe or from the left toe of Gustafson. Back in his own zone, here's Asparov in behind his own net. He's forced out. Head mans the puck, and Team White gets it back to center. To the line, Balsers is in, but offside off that dump in. Goes for the puck, but that was offside as soon as Bodin dumped it down to the corner. Yeah, and he knew it. Uh, Rudy Balsers did know that and uh, uh, sort of eased up on the backhand attempt. And Rudy Balsers is another young man here, Dean, who we're going to have to keep a very close eye on. A fifth-round pick of San Jose. He was, of course, part of the Eric Carlson deal. He played 36 games with the Senators last year and uh, fit right in. Five goals, nine assists in those 36 games. And then went on to score... Nine points for Latvia, the world championships. Alexis Binner sends the puck cross ice in the neutral zone. It's shipped down inside the line by Baudin. Takes a bad angle shot, misses. Alexis Binner has it in front of him and now gets control. Here's Binner. He's just 18, but he's played in the North American hockey for five years now, coming over to play in the North American Hockey League before going to the University of Maine. I asked him yesterday, I said, you know, Alexis Binner, how uh, how do you pronounce that in Swedish? And he said, Alexis Binner. Uh -huh. Perfect. Makes it easy for us broadcasters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How else would you want to pronounce it? Back along the boards. Team White again. Binner. Sends it to his partner. That's knocked down in the neutral zone. Here's Luchuk. Leaves it. Shot doesn't get through as Victor Lodine tried to soft touch it through a couple of legs. Dumped back the other way. Parker Kelly goes in to try and get it. Does. Takes the head in the corner. Knew it was coming as he was going to take contact from Hannes. Back in front. Quick one-time shot. And the save is made once again Whoa. by Gustafson off that one-time snapper and a hard one from Shane Pinto. Shane Pinto. Draft pick this year of the Ottawa Senators, and he got a quick, quick release away, and a good save was made by Gustafson. Cleared along the boards, but not out. There's a glove save again as Novak sends a slapper in. It's gloved down by Gustafson, and again a face-off inside the Team Red zone as 
We are nearly well, seven minutes into period number one, still waiting for the first goal. Yeah, that's probably the best scoring chance for Team White and Shane Pinto getting that opportunity. Ottawa's first second round pick taken 32nd overall. Well, there were a lot of teams at the draft last weekend, Dean, that were quite interested in trying to trade for that 32nd overall pick. For those who are from out around the Kinburn area, Shane Pinto is in no way related to the family that owns the Pinto Valley Ranch. Okay, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Because there's probably a lot of people saying, I wonder if there's a connection there, but apparently not at all. Well, he's another product of uh, the American hockey, or the United States uh, hockey development team. Uh, he spent the last three years in the USHL. Uh, well, he split last season between Lincoln and Tri-City and uh, 28 goals in total last season. Clearing attempt fails. Kasselik snaps one just wide of the net. Team White now up ice at center. Balsers drops it. Johnny Gruden carries it into the zone. Then he loses the puck back to the line. Held in there by Branstrom. Flares it to the net. It's gloved down again by Gustafson. And he holds on for another faceoff in the team red zone. The, the dominance is, as far as play has gone so far in stealing pucks and keeping them in the white zone has been pretty key to this first period. But almost every faceoff on a stoppage has been inside team red zone. So I'm not sure you say who's had the advantage in this thus far scoreless opening period. Reds working their work out. Pass through the middle to Varano, doesn't connect. It's cleared back out again. Here's Lassie Thompson, turns the puck over in the neutral zone. Back inside the line, Varano drops it back. Here's a one-timer chance and a blocker save off a hard, hard shot oh. from Trenton Bork as he got all of that and ripped it up into the mesh. Once again, there's some great lateral movement from Joey Decord moving from right to left. And his challenge is what uh, made the save here. He came out and, you know, you can't teach big, and he looked quite big on that particular save. Joey Decord wearing the pure white mask. It's a brand-new mask and has yet to get it to put into his team colors. That'll happen, of course, over the course of the summer leading into main training camp. Team White inside the zone, some banging and crashing. Back to the point. Here's Aspero, fires it in. That is tipped just wide. Back in the corner once again. Puck is moved back to the point by Bodin, moving in Aspero with a shot. That's blocked, and it bounces back out to center off the shin pads of Anderson. Aspero at center dumps it in, takes a bump on the play from Alex Formanton. Reds now trying to get out. Puck is reversed along the boards by Connor McDonald but not out of the zone. Things start to heat up here a little bit more here, a little bit more physical contact, which is nice to see. And I can tell you that DJ Smith, under the watchful eyes of the head coach and the GM, Pierre Dorian, they are quite content to see a little bit of physicality. Back out to center. White's dropping inside the line. Quick snapshot goes high and over the net from Mark Simpson. Around the boards, it drifts all the way back down ice. This is one of the things that Joey Decord loves to do. He is an excellent puck handler. You just saw him handle the puck with ease from backhand to forehand. Skipping along the boards down to the corner. Clapperton gets the puck deep to the corner. Hannes fires it through. That goes off the stick of Novak up into the mesh. And we'll get another stop. But you know, one of the things I just noticed when you were talking about him playing the puck, he can take advantage tonight because here at the Canada Rec Center, there's no lines behind the net. There's <laughs> yeah, no forbidden, forbidden zone. zone. He can go and play it anywhere he wants. Yeah. He can rip it from anywhere. Do you remember in the Buffalo game, the game, the one game that he played, he went to the side of the net and stumbled as I believe it was Dylan DeMello yeah. coming back to pick up the puck, and DeMello in a stoppage of play came up to him and said, what, were you expecting me to be on the forecheck? <laughs> There's a chance in front and probably too close as the court got a piece of that, puck to the line. Clapperton brings it back in and offside the call. So I think there's a penalty here, Dean. And line. you know what? The nice thing about these things. Oh, is it just offside? Yeah, no, just offside. Okay. There's no linesman, so the two referees are both the referee and the linesman. Yeah, uh, too bad because I thought for sure that uh, if there was a penalty, we can explain the penalty situation. It's basically uh, a breakaway with a chase. All right. It's like four on four spring hockey for youngsters. I was kind of hoping for about five or six penalties every period because. Then yeah. you get the penalty shot with a chase. Absolutely. Goalies probably want it too. 
Decord leaves the puck, and that gets everybody in trouble as they're now in close corners trying to get out of the zone. Making some space for himself along the boards there was Drake Batherson. Gets the puck back to center. Inside the line, Balsers gets it back. Drop back pass to the point. Doesn't get through, and here's a 2 on 0 inside the zone. Forehand scores! A top shelf shot, no problem for Angus Crookshank as a 2 on 0, and he puts a top shelf. It's 1 0 Team Red. Yeah, nice little steal just outside the white blue line, and Crookshank uh, takes full advantage of it. Takes a quick little pass, and before Joey Decord could square himself, Crookshank has a quick release and finds the back of the net. And we see our first goal here in this. Uh, Dev Camp scrimmage of 2019 presented by Sportcheck. And again, this is just neutral zone congestion uh, that uh, creates the turnover, and Team Red takes advantage. Crookshank uh, just finishing up his first year at the University of New Hampshire, 5'10, 181, and was a 126 pick overall last year in the draft, not this year, but last year in the draft for Ottawa. Fifth round pick, Dean, one of those character guys, uh, played hockey in the BCHL and uh, enjoying a good start to his New Hampshire Hockey East career. Aspro with a shot that deflects to the other corner. On the other side, Branstrom holds it in, but oh, nearly another breakaway as Verano had the puck flip off his stick right at the line, and that was going to be a one-on-o or possibly a two-on-o again. And there we saw the vision of Logan Brown, a former first-round pick in 2016, 11th overall by the Ottawa Senators. Big things expected from him. He's got a great opportunity to be a one of the four centermen on this team this year, on the Ottawa Senators this year. Formington across to Verano. His shot goes off a stick up into the mesh once again, so another stoppage. 8.40 now to go in period one, and one nothing the score, only goal of this game, coming from Angus Crookshank. I haven't had a chance to speak with Logan Brown this year. Dean, I'm not sure if you have or not. He's listed at six foot six. I was going to ask you if you know, has he grown at all? Because you know what, it's not uncommon for the 20, 21-year-olds <laughs> no. to grow, continue to grow. Whether he's had his growth spurt and it's done remains to be seen. But at six foot six, 216 pounds, he's got uh, extremely soft hands. The Senators have very, very high hopes for Logan Brown uh, coming into the fold sooner rather than later, I would think. Well, you know, he had a real strong season last year when he was healthy. The problem was that he went through a series of injuries and recovery and then another injury, and some were, you know, the same injury, the same knee injury, getting flared up again, and then he had another injury to the another leg. So he, he just had such an injury-plague season last year, but when he played, uh, he was really effective. He had a strong year when he got on the ice and got himself healthy. Well, go-to guy. He was their top centerman. See, along with Batherson, they were just absolutely dynamic together when they were together. In the neutral zone, Team Red recovers the puck. They counter back quickly. Four on two. Taking a wide. Bad angle shot hits the side of the net. Abram off in the corner, trying to maintain control. Back to the point. Stolen away. Puck chipped to the side of the net. It's Clapperton. Tried to set up a Bramoff, turns with it. Clapperton gets a chance. Spinning centering pass is knocked away as that's Crookshank again, just trying to get it to the front of the net. There's Crookshank again along the boards, angled off the puck and in his own zone. Here's Jordan Power. Moves the puck ahead, Simpson for Balsers. Balsers couldn't get it to slow down, and the puck was tipped away again by Clapperton. Here's Rudy Balsers. Back to the point, but couldn't connect up with Brandstrom, who has to chase it back to his own line. Trying to get away from Verano, drops it off. Use the relief valve. Nice move there to get some open space in. Thompson to the line, carries it in. Drops it back. Chance for a good release, but he couldn't release the puck as Batherson. Probably could have gotten a good shot away had he gotten the first shot away. Back up ice and down to the line. Here's Alex Foreman who takes it wide, cuts in. On Lassie Thompson, round the boards to the point. To the point, there's a shot that gets through. Pad save is made by Decord off that slapper from the point by Johnny Tyconic. The motor Team on White. Alex Foreman and Dean is revved up to about 1,000 RPMs here. He is go, go, go. Started the season last year with the Ottawa Senators. Played nine games for Ottawa before being sent back down to junior. This will be a good, good start for him as well and a big summer for him. Johnny Tyconic drops it off for his partner, and they try to get it out. Now out to center. 
Here's Kostelik to the line. Kostelik carries it deep. Physically in this development camp, physically, there is nobody in this camp bigger, more muscular, stronger than Mark Kostelik. He is, they list him at 220, but he says he's probably about 226 right now. And there is not a whole lot of fat on that frame. Yeah, and a 20-year-old drafted this year by the Ottawa Senators. Uh, bloodlines are very, very good for Kastelik. His uh, father, Big Eddie, uh, played a handful of games with the Quebec Nordique. And uh, is it his uncle? His grandfather's his Patty grandfather? Stapleton. His yeah. uncle is Mike Stapleton. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, it's in the blood. Coming in down the right side and charging to the net. Crookshank again and rings it off the crossbar. So probably the most productive guy in this first period, both teams so far, has been Crookshank, has the only goal, and there just chimed one off the crossbar. one nothing. Team Red leads with 4.45 to go in period one. Yeah, and I just want to correct myself on uh, Castellick here. His father, Eddie, played for the Washington Capitals. Yep. He had more than a handful of games in the NHL. Played 220, I think, 220 yep. games for the Capitals and Hartford Whalers from... 85 to 92. Yeah, he was drafted by the Caps back in 82. Ended his career playing in Europe, but also played at times in the uh, IHL back when they uh, had the WHA, played in the WHA at times as well. So, former one of those teammate German in, guys. Former teammate in Germany of Rob Murphy. Rob Murphy, of course, former senator and, of course, also one of the team's professional scouts. This type power with a shot. Power couldn't get it through, but gets his own rebound back off McDonald. Power cycles it back to the corner. Here's Power again. Finds the high slot. Shot through traffic. Misses Power's side of the net. Took too long to get the shot away. That allowed Team Red to get in on the block. Back to the point. Moving in. Branston with a shot. That gets blocked. Back along the boards. Chip pass ahead. Everyone else changes. Formanton goes it alone. Drags it along the boards, just lagging the puck, looking for help. Dumps it to the corner. Hannes sends it in deep. This Team Red's trying to recover the puck. Puck is knocked down, clearing chance. Big save by court as he takes that in the chest. Chance to get it out, but held in once again. Lodine keeps it alive. There's another shot to court, knocks that away. In the corner, trying to work it back out front. Lucek. Puck is cleared all the way back out and down to Team Red's end. Yeah, Power got uh, caught watching the puck a little bit, struggled in his own zone, but uh, recovered nicely by just simply making the simple play. Flipping out, get off the ice, get a line change, and regroup for the next shift. Luchuk dumps it in, heads off on a change. Look out. Through the neutral zone again. Team Red steals the puck away inside the line. Centering pass back to Bernard Docker, doesn't connect with him. And he has to go back to his own end. Here's Jacob Bernard Docker. JBD dumps it back to the corner. It is sent around the boards by Tyconic. Kasselik loses an edge, goes down. Shot in front is tipped to the corner and not much on it. Back along the boards on the other side. Lassie Thompson in to play it. It's a shot in front, loose puck. Down on the ice, Gustafson makes the save. Uh, he's looked sharp team. in the nuts here for yeah. uh, Team Very calm, eh? Team very Red. for yep. A, yep. Poised First back on the ice, very calm. He was quick to admit that last year started too quickly for him in his first year in North American hockey. He was expected to play most of the season or, uh, in the ECHL of Brampton and uh, with injuries to Hogberg and an injury then to Mike Condon, he got forced to playing perhaps way too much uh, in Belleville last year. But you learn from it. A steal by Team Red. Logan Brown puts it to the front of the net, looking for a little knockdown there by Anderson. Round the boards, held in by Bork, and his shot deflected. Back to the other side. Ollie Alsing on the point, asking for it, but it comes back to Verano. His shot misses high. Back along the boards, spinning to hold it in. Tren Bork does just that, but everybody else changing. Team White has a chance to walk this out. Final minute of period number one, one nothing. Team Red.
has the lead. Yeah, 60 seconds left in this period coming up. I want you to stay with us on this live stream presented by Sport Check because we are going to hopefully speak with Josh Norris and Jonathan Davidson, two players attending this year's Dev Camp, which is, of course, presented by Sport Check and uh, two that are not participating uh, here tonight because, uh, well, of some injury situations. Now there's Steele and McDonald lobs the puck back down inside the team white zone. I should say uh, injury recovery situations because neither player is injured to the point where um, well, I know they're that not Josh, participating in dev camp. Josh was talking this morning how he was trying to talk them into letting him play tonight, but the, doc, the team doctor said, yeah, no. Uh, Shoulder surgery last year at the end of his season. Uh, the, well, cut his season short, obviously. Um, yeah, so we got an update from him, hopefully. Five Another. seconds to go in the period. A little bit of fun and frivolity down in the goal mouth. Well, one of the things that has been prominent here in the first uh, 19 minutes and 55 seconds has been play around both nets. And in other words, uh, both teams, I'm sure, have been instructed to go hard to uh, the opposition's net. Can't score goals if you're shy and going to the dirty areas. The players certainly are doing that here in the first 20 minutes. Off the draw in his own zone. Lassie Thompson protects the puck. Horn goes to end period one. A little flood, one nothing. Team Red leads the only goal of this game so far coming in period number one, and that off the hands of Angus Crookshank. Yeah, good fast-paced period for sure. At one nothing, Angus Crookshank uh, beats Joey Decord, who I'm guessing is going to see at least another half period. We'll take a uh, quick 15-minute break. We're going to continue. We're going to take a break right now. Are we not on our live stream? Yep, our live stream is going to take a quick break. Want you to stay with us when we come back. Hopefully, we'll hear from Josh Norris, Josh Norris, and Jonathan Davidson. Dean Gord back after this. From the first time we met DJ, we felt really comfortable with him. We felt he was someone that brought a lot of accountability. He was someone that won as a junior coach. He's someone that has a huge presence. He's someone that also brings a lot of details and a lot of knowledge when it comes to the game of hockey. And we just felt that it was the right mix for us. And he was someone that would be able to grow with our team. You know what, I'm, I'm absolutely excited for this opportunity to, to guide this young team. I think we're gonna be exciting. Uh, we're gonna play fast. Uh, and I think you're going to see a team that works uh, every night. And, and, the, and the best part is the opportunity to help these guys grow into, uh, you know, everyday NHLers, the guys that aren't here, the guys that are here, and, and build ourselves a team. And uh, it's uh, we over me mentality here. I think DJ is a very proud individual. I think he's very confident in his abilities uh, to be head coach in the NHL, and we know that will translate into our success. We're, we're going to grow together. Uh, you know, there's certain things I'm going to learn about them, and they're going to learn things about me, but ultimately, it's about us. We feel that having someone that can grow with these players, someone that can teach these players, someone that can make these players accountable, someone that can, uh, we feel, bring certain intangibles that DJ will bring as far as passion and energy, will just uh, light a fire under a group and make us better uh, sooner than later. Probably my biggest strength is uh, I'm as positive as anyone uh, you're going to meet. Uh, I'm very vocal. I talk to every player every day. Uh, people need to know you're a person first and you're a coach second. And I think when people understand that and you realize you're on more of a common ground than, uh, than them looking up at a coach that's looking for them to make mistakes, that's not the case. I'm looking to win and, and we're going to do this together. Thanks for uh, joining us here on the stream tonight. one nothing Team Red leads after one period of play. Angus Crookshank with the only goal uh, not playing tonight in the scrimmage. Uh, there's three guys because uh, they all have various injuries, so that means they have to visit with Gordon and I, uh, Josh Norris, and, of course, the uh, your guy is... Jonathan Davidson. Uh, yes. You, yes. We have our guys. Uh, a, a former draft pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets, a former draft pick, obviously, of the San Jose Sharks, and uh, anxious to get an update from you, obviously... I'm sure you wish you weren't here and on the ice, but if you can, we'll start with you, Jonathan. Uh, maybe a quick update on uh, Dev Camp so far. Uh, it's been really good. Uh, I'm just trying to enjoy and uh, like adjust to Canada. Yeah. Oh, is is this your first time in North America? Now, obviously, being a draft pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets, 
Did you attend last year a, a dev camp with Columbus? Yeah, and a uh, training camp too. Yeah, training yeah. Camp yeah. Well. Okay, and um, you're not in tonight. Uh, you got a little bit of a, uh, an issue? Yeah, I got a little bit of an issue. I, uh, I have a little headache that uh, I had, uh, I suffered from a concussion in the, in the like late season last year. And I, I don't have any symptoms on concussion, but I have a little headache. Okay. And I also have a sinuses problem. Yeah. So when I go back to Sweden, I will do a surgery for my sinuses and then okay. that will be good. But just for security that I, that I don't play. I had sinus cavity surgery a long time ago. It's not fun. <laughs> now, Josh, everybody knows what your deal is because being in the World Junior team, that gets a lot of publicity here in Canada. So we won't go through all the stuff. You got the shoulder injury during the World Juniors. You went back to Michigan, tried to play with it. That didn't work. You had the surgery. You're in all the practices during dev camp, but anything's body contact obviously is a no-go. How, how do you feel? I know you are saying earlier today that you asked the guys if you could play, and they said absolutely not. But obviously, you feel like you're good enough that you possibly could now be in body contact. How, how are you feeling now? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I truly don't think I'm ready for it yet. Obviously, I want to play, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and i got to be careful. But um, the medical staff has done a great job with me so far, and, um, you know, Schwartzy and Rob, I've done a great job in the weight room with me and um, you know, I'll be here for a couple of weeks after development camp to work with them. So um, about another month or so and we should be good for, uh, for body contact, but just got to be careful. Now, how tough a decision, because as we said, after the World Juniors, you tried to play with it. How, how tough a decision was it to shut it down and have the surgery? Or, or you, just, you just couldn't limp through each game getting it ready to play? That, that couldn't have been an easy call. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. Um, you know, it happened, you know, I think midway through the World Juniors and I ended up playing the rest of the way with it. And um, it bothered me and I knew it was something that I needed to get checked out when I got back. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I needed surgery and that was the best option for me. But, um, you know, long term, that was going to be what was best for me. And, um, you know, I'm happy I went with it. And I'm feeling good right now and it's just exciting. Okay, one final question for me. Uh, you'll have to verify this. There's no particular reason for Brady Kachuk to be at this development camp. He's not skating. I was told the only reason he came was to heckle and malign you through your first development camp. I just want to know if there's even a speck of truth of that, because I know Brady and I could absolutely see that being true. That's probably 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's coming in tomorrow, so we'll see what he has to say. Well, it, you, you know what, I've said for 27 years now, working this game, the hockey rivers run very, very deep. You're obviously best friends with Brady Kachuk. Somehow you end up on the same team professionally. The hockey rivers run very deep. Coming into this situation here in Ottawa, Jonathan, did you know anybody in advance? And I think Vitaly Abramov, who came over in the trade with you, you probably have a familiarity with him, but anybody else? Uh, there's a lot of Swedes here yeah. that I'm uh, really familiar with. Uh, Andreas England, for example, okay. is my uh, buddy, my fisherman back in Sweden. No way. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And then, uh, yeah, of course, uh, Vitaly uh, and, uh, yeah, a little bit, little chat with Duclair. It's um, incredible, eh? I mean, everywhere you go, you can cross paths with somebody that you've played with or against over the years here, and just young men here doing this, and uh, it's fun to watch. It's certainly an uh, uh, enjoyable scenario here. We wish you both, uh, both the best of luck here. Um, how's Dev Camp been so far uh, as far as uh, expectations? And I know you can't do everything that you want to do, but uh, expectations-wise. Uh, really good. Yeah. Like, uh, I appreciate every moment, and uh, I've, done, I've done every practice and yeah. everything, like on ice, every test, and it, it's really good. So. I was. I wanted to play this game, but uh, uh, they say I couldn't. But I, I, I know I could. Uh, describe yourself as a hockey player for the fans who are watching. Uh, fast, fast-paced player. Uh, 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 probably. Yeah, I have a good shot, and okay. I, I like to bring the puck to the net, good. and uh, like to work hard. Excellent. Good okay, stuff. now I told. I remember I told you. Final question. Okay, one last question for me. Um, Guys who are 18 to 21 years old, there's three things that are the most important to them. I will skip the first two and ask you the third. How's the food been? It's been really good, actually. The food? <laughs> a lot of good dessert. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Bodies are a temple hey, here, we fellas. Did, we just had a talk yesterday about nutrition and trying to eat good 80% of the time. And, uh, but now <laughs> and you're in a solid 65 right now? 65, 70%? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> no, it's, it's been really good.
Thanks for, thanks for joining us, guys, and uh, great to see you in this camp. See you in main training camp, and uh, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Outst outstanding stuff here, fellas. Jonathan Davidson and Josh Norris, thanks for watching here. We're going to take another quick break. We want you to watch this video here as we uh, get set for the second period. Team Red leads Team White 1-0 on this live stream. Dev Camp 2019 presented by SportCheck. So we'll try to get this uh, North American goal all this done, and then we'll uh, move into overall today. We'll power through here. Tomorrow morning, uh, Pierre Kuhl will come in. We'll do a goalie list. Once the list is all put together, we'll, we'll take a look at it. It's a lot of hours of work. It's a lot of hours of travel. It's, uh, it's kind of like leading up to the finishing piece. To get everyone uh, in the same room and, and hear the passion they have for certain players. And it's a long week and it's a battle trying to sort it all out, but it's a very informative week for all of us, really. You know, it's interesting for, for, for each guy to be able to sit there and listen to others speak about a certain player and, and think, geez, you know what, I, like, I didn't see that. And, and let them beat it around and, and see, you know, see what kind of comes out at the end. Small body, skilled guy. They're such a smart players too. They compete. He showed some pushback, which is good. This guy could be our fit. We've known each other for a long time. And um, I think the relationship with Trent is as strong as probably any GM and chief scout. And he knows the value of his work and what he brings to the table and how he directs the staff and how he gets the most out of all our scouts. So it's a lot of uh, mutual respect from definitely from the management side towards Trent. This is where you start to know where the scouts feel um, strongly about certain players. I think we're at a point where the staff believe that I do uh, have their backs on things, but I, equally I feel the same way about them. If we don't have that two-way street, it's tough to, to put the list, the list together properly and, and well. That's important, important for our group, group dynamic, and it's important for us in order to get to the, to, you know, the place we want to be where we're picking the best player. Okay, so we yesterday got down to 51. Based upon what we're hearing, who has the most upside here? There's an expertise in, the, in that room that we bring. Uh, there's an experience that we bring. Um, there's a lot of hours of work uh, and digging that the average person won't have that kind of information. And so whatever information I can acquire from those guys will allow me to make the best decision, I think. And so that's why I'm prodding and poking for as much feedback as possible so that I can make the best decision possible. Now we're down to one or two guys with limited viewings. You know, if you really like the guy, then you better do your homework and go find out about him. This is what you need to do. You, you have to have an opinion on a player. There, there's some issues I've heard. And you have to back it up. He doesn't really go hard in the gym, stuff like that. They're really constructive arguments. For me, the six, I think it's six three and a half. It's the point of being guy in the West Cock. And they're really constructive points. He's got skill. There's no doubt about that. And that really sets, you know, a great foundation to have a great list when we come to the draft. If there's any chance that we end up with this guy, we want every department to kind of check it Scouts identify and say, listen, I really like this guy, and I think this is the range we'll have to take him in. I mean, he's got to be one hell of a player. That's what I tell you that. Is he a little character guy? Yeah, work ethic. And so we monitor it as the draft moves along. And if you sat in on the meetings from start to finish, you're, you'll, you'll hear certain names, and you, you wouldn't be surprised when it comes time uh, that the draft is over that you, you know, some of those names would be part of the Ottawa Senators. This is really where they can speak up. I know this guy here has got a little bit of skill because I've seen him myself. This guy's a hard son of a to play against. And there'll be changes from now till the draft, you know, with the combines and interviews, testing and all these things. But the scouts can really sell the players that they really like. These past few days have been about that, you know, setting the best list possible for when we get to the draft table in June in Vancouver. Please to select from the Boston U Terriers, Brady Kachuk. You hear your name. What do you remember the moments after that you get you get drafted in the NHL? I mean, just first things first. You don't want to fall. 
hugging up your family is pretty special. Just you know, all the credit really goes to them, and that's what made it you know, real special is to share that and want to enjoy the moment, but also kind of get it over with to make sure nothing does happen, a little slip, a little fall, or your pants rip going up the stairs. So overall, it was just such a, a fun experience. You know, the draft kind of changes the future. So, um, I mean, you just really got to enjoy it. And, and they took a chance on, on me. And you know, once that decision was uh, was me that I was picking me, it was just, it was, you know, so happy and just wanted to get going right away. Welcome back to the Canada Rec Center. One period in the books of the 2019 Senators Development Camp scrimmage. Brought to you by our friends at Sport Check. Dean Brown along with Gord Wilson. And Gord, if there's one thing I'd like to see in this second period of play is either more dirty play, <laughs> more physical play, yeah. uh, a couple of fights, but certainly a couple of goals. Yeah, not a chance there. Yeah. Uh, not a chance of fights. No, I they've been told. Think, actually, I don't we, think. No, they've been told. No fighting. Did you? There, there was a little stretch in this first period of play that we just witnessed that uh, had uh, a little bit of more of a physical tempo to it. And my guess is uh, that we'll see a little bit more of it. I saw one play where Parker Kelly got, uh, I won't say slew-footed, but he got yeah. stuck from behind in the slot and he got up. He, he went down on the ice backwards. He got up and came right after. I can't remember who it was, but came I'm right uh, after the guy who hit him. So I'm okay with it being dirty. I, yeah. As you know, I like dirty hockey. Yeah. You know? I, uh, I I know that it wasn't popular with some people, but I like the way the St. Louis Blues went through the playoffs. You have you they force you make a call or don't because if you don't make a call, I'm going to keep doing this, and they kept doing it, and they won the Stanley Cup. So like the Anaheim Ducks of 20, yeah, exactly. 20, 2007. Right. Uh, well, you've said for 26 years now, uh, hate is good, good and hockey. you know what? It's interesting because I um, uh, I, I am seated. A, uh, a hot stove uh, discussion yesterday uh, during lunch uh, for the prospects. And the main theme was, uh, and uh, the, we had um, J.G. Pajot, uh, uh, <laughs> Mark Borvietsky, yep. and Sean Donovan, Sean Donovan as our yep. panelists. Donovan. And the main theme from all three of them, the main message was, enjoy every minute of it, but the teammate work starts right now. You made get in a disagreement with a player or two throughout this camp, but at the same time, you're going to be teammates, or you hope to be teammates, yeah. down the road here. But you're right. Uh, hate bring, or, uh, hockey brings out the best and the worst of some people, and uh, you know what? In a contact sport, and in a situation where there are players fighting for jobs, there's no question that, uh, you know what? Hate can be good, even for just a short period of time. one nothing. Uh, team Red leads Team White. Is that correct? Yes, I've got yep. Team Red leading one nothing, And uh, you're looking right now at a very fresh sheet of ice. I've got to be honest with you. When I was looking at the rosters here, Crookshank got the only goal and hit a crossbar. When I was looking at these rosters beforehand, I'm thinking to myself, the guys to watch here, because they're probably just going to light it up, are going to be Verano or, you know, Logan Brown yep. or, you know, the guys who you know, Alex Formanton. Angus Crookshank, as, as far as getting chances, he's got the only goal, and he's the only guy who hit a crossbar. I can't say that that was something I was betting on. Mucking and grinding. That's the best way to go about things here, perhaps, in the tight quarters here at KRC. We are going to see a switch of goaltenders for both teams. Uh, so... Uh, Solgard Mags, goes to the other end. Mag Solgard is going to get a chance to play here and likely finish the game. Uh, we can Kevin tell you. Kevin Mandelis will be at the other end. Kevin Mandelis at the other end of the ice. So the night is done, or the scrimmage is done, potentially, for Joey Decord and Philip Gustafson. And I just had a chance to speak with uh, goaltending coach Pierre Gru uh, moments ago. And uh, like me, he gave a thumbs up to the uh, play of Gustafson. We thought, uh, well, I certainly thought he played very well. Uh, in that first period of play, as did the goaltending coach. And I don't know what uh, I don't know what Pierre Gru has done in the summertime. Either it's a new haircut or possibly some new hair care products. But I got to tell you, for, for a summer look, the goaltending coach is one sexy dog. Yeah. For <laughs> development camp, he's got a sexy dog look on. You don't expect this time of year from a hockey coach. I, I you know what, Dean? It's funny that you mentioned that because I thought at one point last year. When the Senators were going through goaltenders, like, 
you know what goes through geese. Uh, he was getting some gray hair, but it looks like everything is back to normal here now. So it's amazing what a summer can do, and obviously one of the best in the business here. And uh, Pierre, Gruen. of course, we're saying this because he's standing right beside yes, us. Yes, he's yeah. standing right beside. There's no us sense here. in All saying right. it if he's not going to hear it. Batherson lines up against Formanton, and period number two is underway uh, here at the scrimmage in Dev Camp 2019, presented by Sportcheck. Batherson gets tied up in the neutral zone as he tried to push the puck down to the red line. In the neutral zone, puck comes free, and it's poked down inside the white zone by Bernard Docker. Here's Branstrom, tries to clear it, but instead gives it away. Logan Brown tries to center it, but nobody there. Here's Thompson. Lassie Thompson sends the puck ahead, but again, Team Red with a counter. Now it's stolen back again, back the other way. Batherson, his centering pass goes off a stick. And again, picked up on the other side by Thompson. And you know what? Lassie Thompson's, in, uh, Thompson's been a name you've said a couple of times here in this broadcast, Dean, and for good reason. He has been around the puck. Lassie Thompson taking 19th overall in this year's draft. And, uh, boy, big things obviously expected from him. He's a right-shot defenseman. He's not a big guy. He's not a massive-sized defenseman. But he has, and everybody's talked about this, and I heard some of the goaltenders on uh, Steve Lloyd's show, for instance, uh, the, he has an NHL shot. Yeah. yeah. Played in Kelowna last year. Could go back to Kelowna, but also could go back and play against men in Finland. And so that's a possibility. There are nothing but possibilities for a talented player like Lassie Thompson. And we still have to double-check this with a crack research department, but I believe he's the first player ever play for the Ottawa Senators whose name is Lassie. Well, you know what? You sent that tweet out when he was drafted, and so I you followed found, it up. I, I followed it up with a quick phone call to uh, an old trainer, buddy of ours. Uh, and has there been one? There has not. Oh. According to uh, our good friend Chris Cook. But you know what? I thought to myself, maybe not a player, but was there not a European scout? I think there was a European maybe. scout for this yeah. team at some point yeah. whose first name was Lassie. Yeah. I got to check that out. And Timmy was not in the well, so it ended up not mattering. But back to the point. Ole Olsing drops it off. Here's a turn back play and oh. a quick shot. Glove save by Stogart. And that scores! Coming down the backside late, picking up the rebound. Ole Olsing makes it 2 nothing. Team Red. Well, Kevin Mandelis finds out quickly just how fast these players are here. And you cannot give up a rebound right back to your uh, <laughs> scoring area. And unfortunately, good save was made quickly by Mandelis, But the rebound went off the pad. And uh, uh, the next thing you know, it's in the back of the net. Look who's here. Is that rookie rookie? The dog. rookie, rookie has here. arrived. Oh, boy. It's getting big, isn't he? I was speaking uh, just yesterday to Ole Olsing, and he wants us to call him Ole Olsing, but in Swedish, it's not pronounced Ole Olsing. How's it pronounced in Swedish? Well, the Olsing is kind of Olsing. It's Olsing, but it's it's not Ole. It's Ule. 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 Okay. That's Ule good to know Olsing. for the uh, astute staff of the uh, in the trainer's department uh, in the equipment room because... Uh, they're always looking for an edge. You know what I found with uh, the equipment and training staff? Uh, ultimately, they don't care at all how guys' names are said. They, they, don't, they don't care about that. Well, they'll win brownie points if they call Ole Uli. Uli. <laughs> Two, <laughs> Two nothing, red. With 17.46 to go in period number two. I'm starting to feel rejected. We've asked a couple of the equipment guys to come on the broadcast twice now, and they just keep refusing. I'm here getting comes the Eric sense Brandstrom. they don't like you. Here comes Eric Branstrom down the wing here, Dean. A young man, and boy, <laughs> we have heard all about his style of skating and how gifted he is as a skater, and we are witnessing it firsthand here. This young man can fly. Chris Clapperton just goes in offside. Clapperton known especially for his Slapperton. Our thanks to Josh Norris and Jonathan Davidson who joined us in the first intermission. Coming up in the second intermission, uh, we're hoping to hear from DJ Smith, the new head coach of the Ottawa Senators, and we're also hoping to hear from Sean Donovan, development coach for Ottawa. Sean has had some help this year. Obviously, Chris Kelly is working the Dev Camp again this year, and uh, so too is Clark MacArthur, former Ottawa Senator Clark MacArthur, and Jesse Winchester as well. Parker Kelly goes in, gets a shot away, and then takes a little jab on the way through. 
Sogard makes the save and he holds on and the face off to his right. When he actually came to Ottawa after he got selected, Gord, he was coming from San Diego and after this camp is over, he's going back to San Diego. Yep. That's where his personal trainer is and uh, oh! And Mag Sogard just felt the wrath of a quick snapshot by Drake Batherson, who let one rip and gets Team White on the board. And that was post and in on a snapshot that <laughs> I don't think Sogard saw. He just, he just hurt. Yeah, the, <laughs> Drake Batherson, the pride of Nova Scotia and the nephew of Dennis Vial. How's that for hockey information? Lives and he grew up in the same town or same area. For part of his growing period, his family in the military, so he moved to a bunch of different places, but calls the place where Acadia University is in Nova Scotia. That's his home. That was a heck of a shot. Abramoff drops it off. Quick shot. That goes off the elbow of Mandalese and up to the corner. Out to center now. Here comes Luke Lohite, drops it to the corner, out of the net. Sogard runs it along the boards. Puck comes back to the line, but not out. Held in, here's Lohite with a shot, and that one goes over the net and up into the mesh. And when you're looking at the big goaltender, Matt Sogard, you'll notice that his stick only comes up to the middle of his chest. And I said to him, I said, you know, you qualify to have the extended stick. And he said, yeah, I know. But he said, to be honest with you, I intentionally cut it this short. I just find I handle a puck a lot better with a shorter stick. So his stick is about six or seven inches shorter than what he's allowed to have. The Robin Leonner effect. Yeah, yep. Interestingly enough, if you ever notice Robin Leonner, the ex-Ottawa Senator goaltender, plays with a very, very short stick. To the line and in. Little forehand move, and here's a loose puck that goes over top of the net, and the net is knocked ajar, so we will get a face-off. I don't think there's a penalty involved in that. We haven't even had a penalty. I've been no, it's disappointing to here because they're the penalty breakaways. shots, yeah, yeah, and they're they're not their traditional penalty shot. If you've ever had a child play four-on-four -four hockey in the spring, you see when there is a penalty, a player starts on the blue line, and the rest of the players line up on the red line and chase them. It's a, it's a chase penalty shot. We're still hoping for... Our first. How come nobody does this to us when we go to come to games? It's because you never lie on your back and <laughs> <laughs> open yourself right up. Not that I would do it if you did. Well, uh, rookie, the rookie is getting CNIB here. training dog is here and he's on the ground having his belly rubbed by almost anybody who walks by. Here we go. Here's a loose puck. Rudy Balser's coming in. Oh, what a save! What a great save by Solgard. Wow. Nice glove hand look there from Sogard as he challenged and Rudy Balsers closed the gap very quickly. Turnover just outside the red-blue line and uh, Balsers gone. Left-handed shot, got the quick shot away and Sogard got the left hand down quickly to make the glove save. Sogard plays the puck to the corner. I know it sounds Swedish but he's actually a Dane. Back in the corner, puck was held into the point by Gannett, and now Team White trying to start a cycle, but out of the corner. Team Red steals it away, out to center. Formant into the line, but Verano takes it wide. Puck wicks off a stick, and back the other way. Here's Kelly calling for it, but never gets the puck as it's tipped to the corner. Back in behind the net. Shea trying to chase it back down. Mark Simpson can't catch up to it, but does. Knock it back down along the boards. Team Red trying to get it out. To the point it comes. There's a weak shot. Back in front. Backhander and Sogard gloves it down after a little snapping backhander from Jakob Novak. And a faceoff again in the Team Red zone. Good big, uh, good uh, bit of concentration there from uh, Mag Sogard. Anytime a Danish player makes it to the National Hockey League, he's often referred to as a Great Dane. Matt, uh, yeah. Mag Sogard is going to be referred yeah. to as the Great Big Dane. You said Dane? Dane. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So had to double check there. Right off the draw, puck goes off a stick. Puck was snapped in there by Novak again, and we'll get another face-off again inside 
the red zone. He's already made two good glove saves in the early stages of this period. The one shot to beat him happened to be on the glove side, but by Drake Batherson, who scored 22 goals in Belleville last year and three for the Senators. Batherson looks to be a player on a mission here in the first five and a half minutes of this period. He's been around the net and has had the puck on his stick. Every shift he's been out there. Lodine in the zone. Drifts back, tries to center the puck. Puck is cleared out to the neutral zone, knocked down just inside the line. Batherson tries to send it ahead, it's picked off, back out to the neutral zone. And Team White tries to counter back with it. Here's Pinto in the corner. Pinto, ridden to the corner as he tries to get a shot through, but his path taken away. Lajanos, here's Welsh moving in. Tries to drop it back, gets it back, his shot. Goes off a stick into the glass. Here's Batherson. Batherson loses the puck, and Lodin goes for a little skate to try and create some space. Victor Lodin out to center. Welsh has it wick off his stick back at the team white line. Now quickly ahead again to the line and in. Here's a drop pass. Low height with a shot, and Sogard makes the save. Back along the boards in the corner. Team red intercepts and back out to center they come. Down the left side, here's Crookshank. Got the first goal of this game. Angled off by Thompson. Puck comes free. Here's Luke Lohite. Down to the line. Steers it to the corner. On the other side, Lassie Thompson was creeping in there trying to find yep. something. But As I said earlier, he's got a presence on this ice. There's no question about it. He smells openings and goes to them. He's not scared to jump up. Here's Thompson again inside the zone. Puck flip to the corner, Thompson along the boards, gets a shot away, and a blocker save by Sogard. Back to the point. Here's Thompson again. Oh, Makes wow. a nice move around. Crookshank gets a shot, rings it off the post. Oh, my Back goodness. Back to the point. Branstrom with a shot. That gets knocked down. Loose puck off the post again. This time a snapshot from Todd Burgess just chimes the iron. Puck is cleared back down ice. That will be an icing call. And some great pressure there from Team Red. Well, we're parked right here at the top of the stands here at the Canada Rec Center watching this development camp scrimmage. And probably a couple of hundred people here just went, ooh, ah, on that last shift from Lassie Thompson. My goodness, outside, inside move. Made the move to separate himself, got some open ice, and then tried to go high glove, and did go high glove on Sogard. Beat the glove, but did not beat the post. That's probably Lassie Thompson's best shift of the scrimmage. Clapperton into the line, dumps it in. Back in the corner to pick it up. Maxence Gannett out to center. Here's Burgess to the line. Bodan loses the puck at the line. And back comes Team Red. Formanton tries to cut through. Gets it across. And Verano in the corner. Back of the net, Logan Brown. Verano with a shot. And that one deflects up into the mesh. Been impressed with the vision of Logan Brown, and so we should. This is one of his major strengths, a strong attribute of uh, uh, the young forward uh, who, you know, what in on the forecheck, in behind the net, picked up a pass quickly, and the puck wasn't on his the blade of his stick for more than half a second, Dean. He found Verano right away, got the puck back to him, and Verano's quick shot was deflected up and over Kevin Mandelis. Team White gets control in their own zone. They break the puck out to center. Down to the line and in. Here's a centering pass. That's knocked away before it gets dangerous as Olsing steers it to the corner. Back to the point. Shot through traffic. And that one deflected away before it ever gets to the net from on the wide side of the ice. Alexis Binner. As the young Swede gets the puck down to the corner. Puck is cleared out to center. Here's Formanton turning in his own zone with it, tries to use the speed, gets to center. Clears the puck ahead, gets it back from Logan Brown, but didn't realize he had it back from Logan Brown. Would it have been a nice play if it connected because Formanton <laughs> blazing speed through the neutral zone to move that puck ahead, and it all started with a terrific bit of edge work in his own zone just inside his own blue line. Inside the line, puck is in the corner. Luchuk sends it back. There's a shot. Glove down. Beautiful glove save there by Kevin Mandelese and a face off to the left in the team white zone. 
Well, Kevin Mandeles is another one of the goaltenders in this system here in this Ottawa Senators system. It was a sixth round pick of Ottawa last year. He's attending his second Senators dev camp. Some good numbers in Cape Breton of the QMGHL last year. He won 29 games, Dean, with a 2.87 goals against average. Just flash some leather there to keep the score 2-1, to one, favoring the red. Six foot four, and they're trying to put a little bit of meat on him. He's only 175 pounds right now, and he's going to get bigger or thicker. I'm not sure he's going to get any taller, but he's going to get some meat on the bones. But very good goaltender. And last year, in the middle of the season, was the Quebec League player of the week in the middle of the season and a big reason why his team got where it got last year had a very strong year in Cape Breton. Icing the call face off will come all the way back down to the left of Kevin Mandelis and let's be let's be honest you know the development of Mandelis is probably one of the biggest reasons why they didn't re-up on Jordan Hallett they basically drafted him and his two-year period came through didn't sign him and basically he becomes a free agent or could go back in the draft and that was a decision made, I think, because of the development of Kevin Mandelis. He kind of took that development spot. Yeah, uh, and uh, in Madison Hat for Jordan Hollett, how about the, the words from Meg Solgarg talking about Jordan Hollett and how much of a help he was uh, to, uh, to Mags in his first year in North American hockey. Team Red steals the puck back in their own zone. Out to center. Clapperton on the wing for Crookshank. Crookshank, bad angle, takes the shot anyway, drifts to the front of the net. Kastelik tries to redirect it, couldn't do it. Parker Kelly driven off the puck by Kastelik. Out in the Western League, they've seen a lot of each other, one in Calgary, one in PA. A little bit later on, Gord's going to sing the PA Raiders fight song. That's going to be good. <laughs> oh, good. Long the boards out to center. Luke Lohheit to the line, lays it across. On the back side, Johnny Gruden tried to get it through. Didn't work. Long lead pass out to center. Into the zone. Here's Verano with a shot. And a great stick by Lassie Thompson. The last second messed that up for Verano. Absolutely. What a close that was from Lassie Thompson. It looked like Verano had a step on the outside. Looked like he was going to be able to take the puck to the net or at least get a clean shot. All of a sudden, Lassie Thompson's stick comes in. Sends the puck wide. Aspero lobs it in. Tyconic clears it back to the corner. Back to the point again. It's a shot knocked down by Sogard. Burgess got his helmet knocked off. In the new NHL, he would be required to go immediately to the bench. That's a nice glove blocker save by Sogard again. Again, lots of traffic right in front of him. Little tap play for Team White as they try to set up Bodin. Tried to send it across for a little tap play. That didn't work back at the point. Benner's shot. That one to flex up into the boards. Puck in the corner. Team White trying to dig it out. Novak puts it to the other side. Here's Alsing on the other side trying to control it for Team Red, but it's pulled off the boards back up. I Gannett with a shot, and it's gloved down by Solgard. And the score remains 2-1, to one, favoring Team Red. Uh, they are the home team here on KRC Ice. And uh, again, coming up in our second intermission with 8.04 to go, we're hoping to hear from D.J. Smith, the new head coach of the Ottawa Senators, and Sean Donovan. And, of course, this is a camp that's going to change things up here a little bit because after tonight there's going to be uh, some players uh, getting exit meetings uh, tomorrow. And... Uh, the three-on-three -three tournament, which is set for Saturday afternoon, Dean, at the Bell Sensplex, is uh, only going to feature between 15, I think about 18 players, to be honest with you. Which is a little bit of a departure. In the past, it's I think it's almost always been, you know, Full barring squad. injury, if you start dev camp, you finish dev camp. But yep. this year, they want to kind of separate things out, and I think there's a better-than-good chance that the guys you're most likely to see get invited to the actual Senators training camp are probably going to be that last group of guys at the development camp. So it's not like there's going to be any secrets about what it means. I, I think that that doesn't mean it's impossible that you don't get an invite to the main camp. Uh, but I think, obviously, if you're in that final group in development camp that's in the three-on-three -on, -three on Saturday, you're likely coming back in September for training yeah, camp. One of the things that uh, it does, the change here in philosophy does, is put a real strong emphasis on this scrimmage. Yeah and the importance of playing very well in this scrimmage. 
Centering pass knocked down in behind the net. And, and that's how things can change. We obviously don't know yet who's going to be on that list. But a guy like Angus Cruikshank with a goal and a crossbar may have put himself in a conversation Absolutely. he might not have been in before. Yep. Inside the zone, Pinto with a shot, and the save is made by Sogard. Puck cleared ahead to center. On the boards, whoa! Cruikshank is hammered as he tries to go through the neutral zone as Welsh lays him out. Back to Welsh in the point. Puck goes off his stick. And the puck is sent back in by Welsh. Parker Kelly tries to get in on the forecheck, but Team Red gets it out to center. And down to the Team White line. Here's Max Verano. Verano in the corner, drops it back. Formanton couldn't get the shot away quick enough before Gruden got his stick on it. Team Red back to the point. Verano gets it across. Snapper through traffic. Knocked down, Logan Brown with a steal back in front for the one-timer, but Verano has a just skip under his stick. Gendra back in his own end, tries to headman the puck to Logan Brown, but instead it's stolen away by Novak. Now it's stolen back, three on two to the line. Here's Abramov, drops it back, Logan Brown gets a shot away, save is made, loose puck, side of the net. Here's Logan Brown trying to dig it back out. He does. Back to the point. It's a shot that goes off a stick, high to the other corner. As that one was snapped in from the point from Cade Townen. Here's Townen trying to pinch in. Back along the boards. Puck comes free along the boards. Centering pass by Lohite doesn't get there, and the puck is dumped down inside the zone. Both teams changing. Dean Nicholas Walsh with the first real big solid hit of this uh, scrimmage. He did it on Angus Crookshank and coming over right away, no surprise, um, was Mark Kastelik, uh to <laughs> pay close attention to Nick Welsh, the former captain of the Calgary Hitman, did not like the hit on his teammate. Burgess carries it down to the line and in. Puck is tipped in behind the net, out the other side. Here's Gannett, gets it across. Gannett gets it back. Sends a shot through low and wide. Off the boards, puck is held in by Aspero on the other side. Tipped ahead, back up along the boards. Team White holds it inside the red zone, back of the net. Around the boards. Puck in the corner. Team White trying to center it. Aspero back on the point, calling for it, but spinning with it. Nermi holds it in. Here's Rudy Balsers, back to the point. Shot through traffic, goes off the stick of Nermi. Here's Nermi, all the way back to the point. Here's Hasbro with a shot, that's blocked as it goes off the stick of Cade Townen and up into the mesh and we'll get another break. 4.03 to go in period two, 2-1, two Team Red leads. Crookshank and Alsing with the goals for Team Red, Drake Batherson with the lone goal for Team White. Yeah, and do you know what? A little bit closer than I anticipated, and I really didn't think one way or the other one team was going to dominate, but I did think there would be more than the three goals scored. So far, goaltending has stood out in my mind here, Dean, in almost the first 40 minutes of this, uh, this scrimmage. To the line and in. Tyconic tried to go it alone, couldn't make it all the way there. To the line and in, long shot, Sogard tips it up into the crowd and another, well actually into the mesh, didn't get to the crowd. Face off will be inside the team red zone with uh, Tyconic. Interesting story, he is one of four brothers who grew up in Calgary and uh, freely admits that his oldest brother, yeah, when hates. they were young, hated each other's guts. Oh hated goodness. each other. Uh -huh. And he said, he everything I did ticked him off and he was older than me, bigger than me. So. He was beaten up on me one day, and I just had enough of it. I got mad. I ran up to my mom and dad's room, got my dad's 9-9 out of his golf bag, and went after my brother and got him, broke his hand. <laughs> and from that day forward, they've been best friends. Yeah, Johnny Tyconic, a second-round pick of the Senators uh, last year, uh, attending his second Senators dev camp, and he's going to be teammates for the next little while with Jacob Bernard Docker, a first-round pick, or pardon me, the second uh, first-round pick of the Senators uh, last year as well. Jacob, of course, drafted 26th overall last season, both uh, attending North Dakota uh, in the, in the uh, fall. 
Here's the Drake. Backhander goes wide. I'm not sure how he even got that shot away. Wow. A great backhander. Missed high. Here's Logan Brown out of the corner. Brown to center. Carries it in the zone. Gets a shot away, and it's gloved down. As well, that was uh, snapped out of midair by Kevin Mandel. As expected here, Dino, the, 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 the bigger players are starting to come to the forefront here. Would have been interesting to hear what the coaches had to say during the intermission because Logan Brown has had the puck an awful lot. Drake Batherson has had an outstanding period, noticing a lot more skating from Alex Formanton as well. Logan Brown wins the draw. Alsing sends it to the corner. Here's Power. Drags the puck free, but it's knocked down by Logan Brown. Out of the corner. Puck is knocked down along the boards. Team Red trying to hold it in, and so far have. Here's Brandstrom back in the zone zone to get it. Brandstrom nearly gave the puck away in close quarters to his own net, but he's going to try and make those creative plays. Logan Brown steals the puck from Power. Logan Brown tries to drag and slide it. Couldn't get a good shot away. Centering pass misses there from Verano. Here's Olsing at the point with some quick feet. Gets around low height. Back high. Quick shot off the crossbar. Snap shot by Bork. Goes off the crossbar. Out to center. Lead pass down ice for Balsers. Deflects and doesn't get to him cleanly. Here's Trenton Bork with it now. Bork sends it out to center. In the neutral zone. Down to the line. Abramov sends it to the corner. Here's Lassie Thompson with a quick turn and then sends it up ice. On the right side. Here's Parker Kelly, tries to take it to the net, gets a shot away on the forehand, and Sogard holds on to that one for a face-off to his left. A good hard drive again by Parker Kelly, and again, outside to inside. Take the puck to the net, get the puck into that blue paint and see what happens. Well, in that particular case, what happened was Sogard just did his job. He got the pads down, he protected the lower portion of the net, took away that lower portion, and no rebound whatsoever. Max Sogard's looked good. Yep. I'm not sure exactly what I expected to see, but another guy who's caught my eye is Ole Olsing. I'm, I'm not sure what my expectation level was, but he's made a couple of plays where you go, oh, wow, and he's got a goal. To the line and in. That one goes low and wide from Lodin. Victor Lodin, one of the Swedes. Out to center. Three on two break for Team White. Down to the line and in. Here is Parker Kelly. Couldn't get in cleanly. Final minute of play here in period two. Here's Abramov. Sends it around the boards. On the other side. Team Red holds it in. With another steal. Aaron Luchuk with a shot that bounces over top of the net. Back along the boards. Here's Lassie Thompson. Tape to tape. To the line, long lead pass intended for Clapperton. And that one whistled down with 31 seconds remaining here in the second period. And coming up during our second intermission, a couple more features from Sens TV. Yep. They do such terrific work. And we're also going to hear from DJ Smith, the new head coach of the Ottawa Senators. I think after Dev Camp, will he head back to Windsor? I think he's got a house percolating yeah. here in the Ottawa area at some point uh, he's got to move his family here and uh, we'll also hear from Sean Donovan player development coach the uh, coach's wife by the way is a former news anchor within a CTV and yeah. CP24 in Toronto reporter anchor producer guessing if she ever wants to do color on Sens hockey she's probably going to get a chance to do that too Ten seconds to go in the period. Team White just wants to get a shot away. And that's not going to happen. Luchuk with a steal. Gets it across to Clapperton. Clapperton snaps it into the end of the period. And it is 2-1. Team Red at the end of two periods of play here at the Canada Rec Center. Yeah, good pace. No question about that. And again, goaltenders coming up big. As, uh, and speaking of, Meg Sogard, six foot seven and a half or thereabouts, uh, looked very good. And we're going to get a flood here at KRC. Uh, both play teams will head to their respective locker rooms. Uh, we'll do a little intermission break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to get into a Sens TV feature for you here on this live stream, and then we'll hear from uh, head coach DJ Smith and player development coach Sean Donovan. All that and more here on this live stream of the Development Camp 2019 scrimmage. And Dev Camp, of course, presented 
by Sportcheck. You know, you're trying to look into that glass ball and, and try to see, does do they have the potential to, to, to get better? I mean, that's a really hard question to answer. It's, it's a feel thing. That's, again, when you're trying to work together with scouts and people that really understand hockey, to know, will they put the work in? Uh, Trent is kind of the lead. Uh, he shortens the list for us and gives us a lot of uh, specific points and then um, try and combine the, the on-ice product and what they're producing here. There's always information going back and forth on character, on other things that, that he'd like to see what our impressions are of it in an, in an off-ice setting, in an athlete or a player that they're looking at and trying to make those decisions. You look at imbalances, you look at uh, postures, uh, body language, character and anthropometrics does he have an opportunity to, to develop more and what are the numbers that he's getting now and what could he get um, or is he 100 percent mature and this is what this is what you're going to get and so if you're going to get them in, in the development camp you want to have that information right away so you can get something and, and more importantly making sure they're doing that for the, throughout the rest of the summer All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are live from the KRC on this live stream of uh, scrimmage of Development Camp 2019. Joining us now, this fine, good-looking man in between. Well, this is the rose between oh, hold two on, thorns. Yeah. <laughs> or is it the other way around here? You want to be the thorn or the rose? I, I like the thorn. Like you like it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play. Sean Donovan, player development coach with the Ottawa Senators. Uh, uh, Donald, first of all, uh, your thoughts on the first 40 minutes of play here? I like it. It was pretty competitive. I, I think Parker Kelly went out there and made a few hits, and all of a sudden everybody got on board. So when you get competitive guys, it makes everybody else kind of up their game. No surprise that it's Parker Kelly. Not at all. Uh, he played in PA, went to Memorial Cup. He won a championship this year, and he just finds ways of winning, and he's a competitive guy. I love it. Speaking of winning, the Jonathan Petra Award winner from last year, uh, along with Brady Kachuk, the two of them uh, voted uh, the hardest workers at Dev Camp, so no surprise to see that he gets the hard work underway here. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a given for him. So, And he's improved his skating, and I've talked to a bunch about him. I'm a big fan of his. Okay, do I get to bring up my points now? <laughs> uh, bring them up. Okay. I, I'm, just, I'm not saying right now go down to the locker room and talk to the guys, but I was hoping in those first two periods it would be a little dirtier. I saw what St. Louis did in the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. I like dirty hockey, chippy kind of mean-spirited stuff. Can you get a little bit more of that into their heads? Can you? Would you like it to be a little dirtier? Yeah, you need it to be because that's how you win. It's competitive hockey. Now you watch the playoffs, See? and See? that's what it is. So I, 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 I'm not, I wasn't you know what? I'm only halfway joking because I'm, I'm. You look at what Washington did the year before. You look at what St. Louis did this year. That that angry side of the game makes a difference in key games and I'm 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 only part way joking when I say you look at effective guys in this league now it's guys who are still willing to play that way yep. ah, you have to compete if you're a little guy you better compete off the charts if you're a big guy you got to compete you have to compete that's the way it is sometimes during the season there's lulls where you get away with having a little more skill but in the end if you have some skill and a lot of compete you win and uh, you see in the playoffs well, you look at you look at guys around the league and you look at you know, you look at uh, Montreal, you look at Marchman, you look at the playoffs, you look at Perron, you start looking around those teams that win, they all have one of those guys that other teams hate to play against, and they that, that makes a difference in this game. I mean, you talk about the Washington Capitals, I think you don't win a cup without Tom Wilson. So you have to have those guys, and you know what, you they're, you know, they're hard to find, but at the same time, when you do find them, you better take care of them and have you know they're going to be a big part of your roster and they make everybody else bigger in your team i'm a big i'm a big proponent of that obviously i'm with you <laughs> donald this is day three of a six day camp seven day camp here it wraps up on sunday uh how have things gone so far and things change after tonight you're gonna uh sort of uh, shrink the camp a little bit here for the three on three on saturday there's only going to be what 15 to 20 guys maybe 18 guys uh, participating in that three on three yeah we kind of changed it up this season and uh you know give give everybody a taste and kind of keep around the guys that have a, a legit chance to play next season and spend a little more time with them one-on-one. -on -one. It was uh, kind of changed it up, but uh, 
Uh, it's just something that we, we think, obviously, where we are is, uh, you know, just to give them a little more one-on-one -on -one and for sure have them go, go away knowing what they need to do, even though everybody will know what they need to do in the summer here. Okay, now, speaking of one-on-one, -on -one, you're you and Chris Kelly so, sort of look after everything as yeah. far as the, the camp is concerned, but you got some help here for this one-on-one. -on -one. Ex-Ottawa Senators Clark MacArthur and uh, Jesse Winchester are on the ice with you. Uh, it's unbelievable. they got tons of experience. Uh, it's easy to talk to the guys because you just show them and say these are humble, hard-working guys who had really long careers. That it, it, They weren't first overall picks or you know top tens, but they had really long really successful careers because they worked hard and they did it the right way and they were good teammates uh, other than uh, parker kelly who else has caught your eye here um make it quick because dj smith the head coach of the ottawa senators who's maybe just a little ahead of you on the food chain uh <laughs> he's standing by here but who else i'm kidding of course other than parker kelly who else has stood out well i mean i i mean i think crookshanks looked really good out here you know flying around he's a competitive guy he plays at unh uh but then you look at a guy, a new guy, if we want to talk about a new guy, Lassie, Lassie Thompson. I mean, you made a few mistakes early, but he, you know what? You'd, you'd like it when a guy's got so much uh, vinegar that you got to kind of rein him in. And you got to rein him in a little bit, and it's great. You see him pound the puck. He can shoot a puck, and he's, and he's got jump, and you're, gonna, you're just going to have to rein him in a little bit. And you know what? I have no trouble with that. I love it. We were noting, actually, during that period, like, he has, he, if he sees a hole, he's going to the hole and someone else better cover for him. And I realize at the professional level, you can't just have guys doing that all the time, but it's easier to pull them back oh. than to try and spur them on. You can't, you, uh, it's almost impossible to get them going. You know, that, that, you know, you think you can and you hope you can with some guys, but in the end, if you got it, you got it. And he's got it. It just, he needs a little refinement. And that's what young guys are all about working with and trying to help them out. John, thanks for this. Much appreciated. And I know you're media savvy, and normally you just don't walk out of an interview uh, in front of the camera, but um, go ahead and walk out of the interview in front of the camera. <laughs> All right, thanks, Donald. Can you give the nudge to the uh, the head coach of the Ottawa Senators, DJ Smith, is coming in here now, folks. Yeah, thanks, DJ, for doing this. No um, and welcome aboard, first of all. Uh, your first little taste of uh, Sens TV and the, uh, the uh, live stream of this scrimmage. What have you thought so far? Uh, of the first 40 minutes that you've watched? Well, certainly uh, there's some nervous kids, um, you know, their first time uh, getting out there in front of the, uh, uh, the the scouts that drafted them and the fans. And, you know, I'm sure it's a whirlwind. And, and that's what it's all about for these kids is is uh, learning how to train, learning how to eat, um, learning, you know, w what the process is like to try and get to the NHL. And also certainly, uh, you know, uh, some of the guys that have been around uh, look like they've been the, the, the better players tonight, the Logan Browns, the Balsers, the Bathersons, and they should be. When you are looking at what you're going to end up with, you're the coach, so you get the players, the, the manager picks. You were a guy when you were a player that uh, played an aggressive game. I think over the course of your career in junior, you've shown that you like to have aggressive players as part of the mix for your team. you got to have speed, you got to have skill. That's a given, but you like to have some players that have that edge. When you're watching players at this stage of their career, is that something that you key on, or you wait till later to try and see when guys separate themselves out? Well, no, certainly that's an element that uh, that uh, you know it's no hidden uh, 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 I, know, I guess idea that uh, people know that I like that style of play, and you know what, uh, if you can score and you have skill and you can add that outstanding, um, but if you don't, you know I'm going to look for guys that can get on the forecheck, big guys that can bang some people around. So you know it's it, you know you can try and make guys do it, but you either have it or you don't. Uh, you know, some people will forecheck, but uh, it's it's in you if you want to hit people hard and you want to play aggressive. Uh, you know, most of the time, it's you'll see it at this age. Uh, one more question, kind of on that same vein. You know, this league has gone so much for youth, speed, and skill, and I, I think that's good. The great the game is at a better place. But I think for a lot of coaches, they look at this and they say. This year's Stanley Cup winner played an aggressive, assertive uh, style of play that maybe was on the edge quite a bit. Last year, Washington played that style, mixed in with skill, and maybe that mix of mostly speed and skill and no-touch hockey is not the true path to go in this league. And as a coach, you have to add that in. How, how, do, you, how do you balance that in your mind? Well, I think there's two seasons. There's a regular season and then there's the playoffs. In the playoffs, you're playing every other day for two and a half months. Um, and you know, and when you have big bodies and you keep banging people, you know, it's it's who can last the longest, uh, you know, with skill. So, um, you know, you you see, you know, there's teams that can, you know, tear it up in the regular season. There's not as much contact, but when you get in the playoffs and everyone starts hitting, uh, there's less room, and, and it's a big man's game. So, uh, there's a fine line. You can't have too many of those guys, but you also can't have too many uh, little speedy skilled guys. So, 
Uh, you got to find the right mix, and you got to you got to see what works for you. But ultimately, you need competitive people, and the more competitive people you have, the better chance you have of winning. Okay, that brings on a Brady Kachuk conversation. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> DJ, did you get a chance to, to address the young men here prior to uh, training camp? And if so, uh, what was the message? Yeah, night one, uh, just when they checked in, just that, uh, you know, it's, it's a brand new start for everyone here. I have no uh, allegiance to anybody. I'm seeing them for their first time. Just how we expect them to treat people away from the arena. Uh, we're changing in all facets for us. We, we want to do things right. We want to... Uh, we're going to work hard. We're, we're going to finish checks. We're going to do all these things. We're also going to make sure uh, we're involved with the community. We're respectful. Uh, we're going to we're we're going to change right to, right from uh, you know right from the start right on through to everything we do. Uh, we're going to do it right. Before we let you go here, what's on the itinerary now for DJ Smith? I know it's a busy uh, end of the week and then a busy week next week as well. And uh, life-wise, uh, you got to sort of. Uh, <laughs> readjust and uh, shift gears here to focus in on maybe the city of Ottawa. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know, we bought a house and we're going to get it mid-August. Um, you know, I'm going to be here through mid midweek next week through uh, the free agency and we'll see what happens. And then I'm going to get home, kind of take it easy for a month. I'll, uh, we'll finish up our coaching staff and uh, we'll get our uh, we'll get our meetings done kind of from our own homes and then uh, we'll start to trickle in here in August and, and get this thing going. And just time frame that you think you might get your coaching staff wrapped up? I think it'll all be done here in the next week. Uh, you know, I don't want to quote me on that, but I, I think in the next seven days uh, we'll have everything wrapped up. All right, Perfect. Coach. Good stuff. Thank you for this. Much Thank appreciated. Much. Best of luck the rest Thank of the way here, sir. All right. DJ Smith, uh, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, thanks very much uh, to the head coach of the Ottawa Senators. We're going to take a break. We'll throw it to a feature here. We've got uh, about He's a, three. quite a bit bigger than you. He's quite a bit bigger than me, yes, but... Uh, I think I have a pretty good sense of humor. I understand his yes. is very good. Well, what I was as told well. is the, the guy's better like fun because he likes people to work hard yeah, and he likes people to have fun. Love it. All right, we're going to take a quick break here when we come back. Third period action of this live stream of uh, the Senators' development camp 2019 scrimmage presented by Sportcheck. To make our selection, we will have one of our first round picks from last year, Brady Kachuk, make this selection. Auto selects from Kelowna, Lassie Thompson. The Finnish influence on the NHL recently, a number of high draft picks, and Otto with the 19th pick gets a Finnish D-man. Yeah, of course, I'm exciting, and let's see what's happened like next couple of years, and now it's only hard work, and try to show my best and keep going. Yeah, Lassie Thompson played for the Kelowna Rockets in the Western Hockey League, and my goodness, that's been an absolute defenseman factory. We saw Shea Weber up on the stage earlier. This guy's a tremendous skater. He gets the puck up the ice quickly. You're starting to look at the makings of a top four defenseman, two righties, two lefties, and as they try to build for the future, this is how you do it. You see the number he wore in junior, number two. There are a lot of similarities. This is for Senator fans to what Duncan Keith was at a very young age. So this, is a, I think this is a very good pick for Ottawa. He's able to move the puck, transition the puck up the ice quickly, and he's able to support the play. And he has upside at the offensive blue line. Those are the defensemen that, that have impacted the game now, and, and and we feel that, that that's you know that that's him. That's uh, that's the way he plays. After a hard year of work for our scouts, everyone felt that uh, Thompson was going to be the guy we're going to get. We're really happy to get this player uh, part of our organization. Welcome to our development camp. Every year we feel that this camp keeps on getting better and better and that's because of you guys. You're going to make an impression on how to be the best pro you can be. And for us that's important. Our culture change starts today. This is the first thing that matters the most for us. Act like pros, be Ottawa Senators. We're starting a new chapter with a new coach. Everyone starts at the same level today. Some of you in this room will start on October 2nd and we'll play against the Toronto Maple Leafs.
Welcome back to period number three of the 2019 Sens Development Camp. It's the scrimmage brought to you by your friends at Sport Check. Third period, and I can tell you right now, it's a one-goal game. I can also tell you Ten minutes. this is not going to be a full 20-minute period. It's going to be a 10-minuter. So there is some urgency in this one for Team White to catch up. And there's a quick shot that just misses low and wide. Back to the point. Team White holds the puck in. Pinto to the corner. Logan Brown steals it from him. And now Team Red looking to break it out. To yeah. the neutral zone. Bernard Docker asking for it, gets it. Moves in. His snapper misses blocker side high. Only a 10 minute period, Dean. We have to remember the date. It's June 27th. It's what, 27 degrees outside. It's getting quite warm in here. And with all due respect to the ice crew here at the KRC, uh, the ice uh, at this point in the scrimmage is not uh, the best. And so uh, that's why we'll see just a 10 minute period here tonight. The only question is, is it 10 minutes of stop time or 10 minutes of running time? Well, we're going to find out in the first whistle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop time, Stop Dean. time. There we 8. go. 53 to go. Questions In the answered. hockey game. <laughs> Here on the live stream, we bring up questions and we deliver the we answers the as answers, well. Dean, and it, just like that. Yep. Just you know, like I, that. You asked if there was yep. going to be stop time and I had the answer. Yeah. Kaboom. Yeah. Face off to the That's right. What 28 <laughs> years of doing this can do for you. Yeah, absolutely. The instinct score, just the instincts, or just the stink. It's one of the two. Hey, our thanks to Sean Donovan, player development coach for the Senators, and uh, DJ Smith, the head coach of the Ottawa Senators, for joining us during the intermission. Some inf insightful things said. And Parker Kelly, speaking of, uh, who Sean Donovan absolutely loved in the first two periods, gets things going here with a good scoring opportunity, or at least a setup of a good scoring opportunity for Team White, who is down by one with uh, eight and a half to go in this game. First period goal from Cruikshank in the second. Ole Alsing for Team Red. They led it 2 nothing. Then the Drake, Drake Batherson, scored. He'll soon the second period, 2-1 Team Red, yeah, and now just 8.34 to go. And Batherson singled out by head coach Smith, and uh, the uh, standout of the second period here, they came to play, the Bathersons and the Logan Browns, and uh, Lossie Thompson stood out very nicely, too, in period number two. Out to center. That didn't work well, so they'll try it again on the other side as the puck is dropped off my McDonald. Streaming down to the zone and in. Puck is dumped down to the corner. And Team Red trying to get control, but instead they lose the puck there. Binner sends the puck ahead. And they finally do get back out to center. McDonald asking for a pass, but instead through the middle. Puck is tipped in by Aaron Luchuk. Team White has finished their change. Team Red just finishing theirs. So they try to steal the puck and do, but can't take advantage of it. Back to the line. The puck is clear, but not completely out of the zone. Team White again to center. Here's Novak to the line. Inside the zone, slides it through. Quick wrister, and that one is snapped up before it gets to be dangerous as J.C. Bodin gets a shot away. Yeah, and again, we see that flash of leather from Mag Sogard. That is a terrific left hand yeah. of this tall young man. He just stabbed out the left hand and made another save. That's maybe about his sixth of the hockey game. 
Power slides it across. His partner gets the shot away, but it's blocked. Three on two, Team Red to the line. Here's Crookshank with a shot, and that goes off the glove and up into the mesh. As that went off the top of the glove of Mandalese and up into the mesh. Had his hands high, and they needed to be high. Yeah, and again, Angus Crookshank in the middle of all of that. Dean getting the opportunity here offensively as Sean Donovan singled out that young man as well through the first 40 minutes of play. Like the fact that he is high tempo and... Uh, uh, starting this third period the way he ended the first two with high tempo. So often you see goalies that get that heavy hand and it drops down to the top of their pad and they can't deal with those high pucks. But the goaltending coaching that these Senator prospects get, keeping that hand high is just exceptional and really innovative. No, it's pretty much the norm around the National <laughs> Hockey League, Dean, uh, and has been for quite some time. He's standing right beside me again. Come on. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny because I was thinking, and I talked an awful lot about the goaltenders in the first two periods. I wish we had Pierre Grew on during the intermission. Because I asked him. He wouldn't come on. DJ Smith didn't mention anything about the goaltending. Sean Donovan didn't mention anything about the goaltending. Philip Gustafson might have been the best player on the ice in period one. And... Sogard has been outstanding here in the, what, 24 minutes that he's played in this hockey game. Fifth row. Here's Bernard Docker to the line. Verano tries to center it, and Formanton nearly got a piece of it. Good job by Mandelese to drop that right leg and drag it back out to center. In the neutral zone, puck is knocked down as Pinto tries to slide it by Bernard Docker, Logan Brown. Back in the zone zone to get it. Head man's the puck out to center. Through the neutral zone. Team Red can't get through. And the Whites try to counter back. To the line and in. Brandstrom slides it across for an open shot. Centering pass. Scores! Coming in the backside with a great snapshot. Aspero jumps up into the play and ties the game at two. Yeah, just like that. No chance there for Solgard on that particular play. That was tic-tac-toe. And Aspero just snuck in behind. Aspero came in from behind and took a nice feed and did a nice job of... Um, controlling that hard pass and he actually had time to place that shot knew exactly where he was going went high blocker side and uh, ties this game at a deuce with 620 to go in this third period off the draw Novak at his own line presses the puck back out to center Luchuk sends it across Lassie Thompson ties up his man just trying to creep inside the zone and they all scrape away along the boards trying to win the puck. Back in the corner, Aspero sends it around the boards. Novak can't get it out. Here's Bork. Tries to hold it in, does momentarily, and it's held on. Here's Abramov, gets a shot away, doesn't get through. Centering pass, puck is loose, side of the net. Steered back to the corner, in the corner, Anderson. Back along the boards. Bork pinches to hold it in, but can't, and now back out to center. Gruden goes wide side. Now to the middle of the ice, looking to get it back. Down in the corner. Here's Gruden. He's pinned along the boards, but gets it back. Gruden centering past Thompson with a shot, and that goes off the leg of Aaron Luchuk. Hobbled for a moment. Now dumps it in, and he will head back to the bench on a change after taking that shot in the left foot. White's back to center with it now. In the neutral zone. Puck is slid down inside the zone by Luke Lohite. Back out to center. Clapperton knocks it down. Sends it to the middle of the ice, and that was picked off at the line. Back across. Bolsters can't handle the pass as he was set up in the corner. Back along the boards. Little steal along the boards, and back out to center is Lodin. Stole the puck away. Here's McDonald, but he takes offside. that pass offside as it came through the middle of the ice and just a step late as Kastelik tried to get it to him, but he was offside. So this tight quartered game continues on here with 4.44 to go in the third. It's tied 2-2. It was 1-0, and then it, was it 2-0 for Team Red? or did Yeah, it was 2-0, and then 2-1, now 2-2. Yep. And um, overtime looming large here with 4.44 to go. We, do, uh, we will see either overtime or a shootout. Not, I think it's going to be a shootout. Yeah, we haven't quite I think uh, with the ice told. deteriorating, I don't yeah. think they would. Yeah. Well, you never know, but I, I think it's probably going to be a shootout if it's tied. And you know what? It, it may be a shootout anyway because as part of development camp, you want to practice and see some of the shootout skills. So even if it isn't tied, we may see a shootout in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. 
Along the boards down to the line, lead pass for Cookshank is knocked down before it gets dangerous. And now the guy who knocked it down is coming back the other way. Alexis Binner. Dean Team Red's got to pick it up here. Oh, chance for Logan Brown on a big right pad save. Off a steal by Brown. Mandalese comes up with a massive right pad save. But Team Red's got to pick it up here. They've been uh, a little behind the play here for the last little bit. Good snapshot off the turn by Vitaly Abramov. And a face off to the left of the Team White goal. Interesting notes from the DJ Smith interview during the intermission. Um, he's going to spend time here the rest of this week and midweek next week through the free agency period to see what his team might look like by, what, July 2nd, July 3rd. Uh, he'll head back to Windsor, take a little bit of time off, uh, move into a new house in the Ottawa area, he and his family, uh, in August. And... Um, at the same time, by week's end, he might have his coaching staff assembled. In the neutral zone, Pintos tries to steal the puck just outside of his own blue line and ultimately doesn't. Nice reverse in the high slot. Centering pass, and the one-timer just oh. misses high and wide. And I'll tell you what, Vitaly Abramov got all of that. Formanton back to the line, gets a shot away. Blocker save from Mandelese. Back the other way. Here's the quick counter from Team White. Down to the line. Trying to take it all the way in, but unable to do it. On the turn was Luke Lowheit. Team Red now in their own zone, trying to cautiously break out. Alsing out to center. Lead pass down to the line and in. Bad angle shot goes off a stick and up into the mesh, and we'll get a face off with 2.45 to go in this third period in this 2 2 game. And whoever assembled these teams, and I'm assuming it's Sean Donovan, they, uh, he did a terrific job of making things extremely tight. Both teams with uh, the odd chance, but for the most part, chances have been taken away by quick sticks and uh, good gap control. Back to the point, shot through traffic, redirected in front, and a nice save by Mandalese. That's a position save. Is in the right spot, in the butterfly, nowhere for the puck to go. Out to center, here's a two-on-one to the line. Bodin sends it across, and unable to get the tip on it was Todd Burgess. Back out to center. Bork with a big right pinch, Dean, offensively for Team Red, and it cost his team the two-on-one thwarted by a bad pass across the crease. Lodin drops it back into his own zone, heads off on a change. McDonald out to center. Logan Brown leaves it there. Here's a Bramoff cutting in, goes to the forehand, tries to slide it across and couldn't make it work. Back yep. out front, McDonald waiting for a pass. That was tipped back out through center and down to the Team Red end. Here's Gendron back to get it. I mentioned Team Red had to pick things he up, but Bramoff has done just that. Logan Brown comes in, steals the puck. Out to center. Vitaly Abramov tips it down inside the zone. Out of the corner. Quick turn back, play the goal mouth. Quick shot, oh my. <laughs> Logan Brown is going to be wondering exactly how he missed that. All alone at the side of the net, but puts it over top of Mandalese. And so with a minute 28 to go in the <laughs> third period, it's still tied. Yeah, and you know what? It's June 27th. It's a development camp scrimmage. Logan Brown misses the net, and did you see his reaction? Hands to his head right away. Abramov did the same thing, looked to the heavens. He did a terrific job on the forecheck to set up. Logan Brown looking at almost a wide open net. Rudy Balsers loses the puck. Good chance in front. Puck is knocked down, and Team White clears the puck ahead and out to center. Sliding along the boards, Balsers drops it back to the corner. Batherson gives it back to him. Here's Batherson in behind the net. Batherson sends it up high. And Rudy Balsers can't get his shot through. There's another one, whips this wide. Batherson gets it to the net. But Sogard gets back in position, makes the save, and holds on to the loose puck. And it's tied 2-2 with 55.7 seconds left. And we have just been informed up here in our broadcast location for this live stream that it will be a three-man shootout to decide things. If I haven't jinxed it and... It remains tied at a deuce with 55.7 seconds left. So 
If it's all tied after the three each shooters, there's no winner. Here's Balsers. Puts it in behind the net. Along the boards, Batherson. Cuts in. Batherson sends it in front looking for a tip. Doesn't get it. Team Red counters back. Three on two. To the line, driving a wide, coming across. Big hit there on Steven Anderson. That's lost. Team Thompson. White gets control. Here's Pinto with it. To Brandstrom. He's been surprisingly quiet in this. Yeah, second period. I thought his first period, Brandstrom's first period was very good. Quiet in the second and on since. Play along the boards. Back to the point. Here's Lassie Thompson. Ten seconds. Winds. Fires. That's blocked. Out to center. Five seconds to go. Abramov gets a shot away. Mandeliz takes that off the right ear, but did make the save. And so 2-2 after three periods of play. And now you were told it's a three-man shootout. So three shooters each team. Is that what you're leading us to believe? Yes. Told that there will be a three-man shootout for each team. And um, I'm assuming that, Dean, if no one scores, um, it'll be a four-man shootout. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's gonna, it's gonna be a shootout, is what it's you're saying. Be a shootout. Yeah. Of some description. And, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Vitaly Abramov is gonna get one of the opportunities to shoot. He was around the net in the third period. That was clearly his best period of the scrimmage. He was the best player on the ice in period three, at least for Team Red. Set up Logan Brown for an opportunity to win the hockey game with about, about what, buck 25, buck 28 left to go in the third period. Brown missed the net on a glorious opportunity that was set up by Abramov. He had the presence of mind moments ago in the dying seconds to actually in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, take a look at the clock before shooting. All right, here comes Rudy Balsers for Team White to start the shootout. Balsers straight in off the angle. Backhander save is made as Sogard just gets that big paw in the air and yep. Balsers ran out of things to shoot at. Yeah, nice, calm, slow, re deliberative reaction there from Mag Sogard. Max Verano now for Team Red. Mandalese out to challenge and five hole goal. Well, he has scored two in the National Hockey League. It is short career that started late last season. Team Red now with a one nothing lead in the shootout. And here comes the Drake, Drake Batherson. Batherson straight in on Sogard. Tries to go top shelf and oh, quick glove. Takes away that chance for Batherson. Uh, stay away from the glove. There's the there's the scouting report. As I said in the third period, Solgard's made about seven or eight glove hand saves. All right, here comes Abramoff, as mentioned. Can win it. Abramoff straight in. Five hole again, and Team Red wins it. Two five hole goals on Mandalese, and that'll do it. <laughs> that'll be it. Team Red wins it. Three to two on an Batherson and Abramoff scoring for Team Red in the shootout. And Sogard provides the defense. He made a couple of terrific saves. So Team Red wins this by a score of three to two. And that is going to do it, Mr. Dean Brown. This has been fun, hasn't it? Well, yeah, actually it is. You always like seeing the kids. You always like to see what's on the way. You always like to see where guys are. And there's always guys that surprise you. When I look at this, I got to be honest, I didn't see Angus Crookshank as a guy who was going to make me go, hey. I didn't see Oli Alsing as a guy who was going to make me go, hey. And to be honest with you, I didn't think a guy who was almost six foot eight would have the kind of glove hand that Sogard has. So, you know, this is early days in their careers, early, early days. They're just on the verge of becoming professional. So there's so much more than lays ahead for them but it really is fun to watch where they are today. So you have a mind for that. When they start making steps, you can say, you know what, in development camp, that kid was great at this, or this guy surprised me then. And that's what I find to be the fun part of these things. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the level of competition increased as the nerves went away. And as I said, you know, June 27th, it's a scrimmage. But for these young players, some of them, 19 of them, I think, in fact, first taste of an NHL camp. And you have your eyes wide open, obviously, and there are going to be nerves. Uh, I think uh, everybody settled in nicely. We saw a good game here tonight. And uh, development camp will continue for some. I think there's a media training session tomorrow, Dean. I believe at least half a dozen players will be at the Bell Media 
building as early as 6.30, 7.30 tomorrow morning to be on CTV Morning Live. They'll do some hits on radio as well, and uh, it's all there's part a breakfast of the... Tomorrow. There's, uh, a, there's a breakfast tomorrow with some uh, uh, season ticket holders and suite holders and chance for them to mingle and meet in a couple of... Uh, fireside chats although no fire will be involved but there'll be chats and then they have meetings right after that and then back on the ice so they've got lots on the schedule there's lots ahead and probably the next big thing we can tell people for everybody else is going to come up Saturday with the three on three yeah the three on three tournament and it's been cut down we heard Sean Donovan tell us the uh, uh, development camp coach tell us that uh, things are going to shrink here a little bit as far as numbers are concerned there's probably going to be between 15 and 20 of these hopefuls uh, that will stick around they'll get more of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching scenario uh, if you will uh, over the final couple of days of this camp so uh, they'll get to uh, participate in the three-on-three -three. that tournament begins at 310 at the Bell Sensplex just shortly after three o'clock at the Bell Sensplex on Saturday afternoon we invite anybody and everybody to come and watch that. I've been doing that for a number of years and it has been a terrific tournament. The players certainly uh, take it very, very seriously. All right, on behalf of our entire production crew here, Dean Brown, I'm Gord Wilson, thanking you very much for watching this live stream of the Development Camp Scrimmage of 2019. All, of course, presented by Sportcheck. Enjoy your evening and weekend, everybody. Happy Canada Day coming up, and uh, again, we'll be in touch as far as the Ottawa Senators are concerned. Lots of news and notes to uh, pass along, I'm guessing, over the next few weeks. Again, thanks again for watching.